everyone and welcome back to my channel or if you're new to my channel hi my name is Esme and today I have uh, a video for you guys talking about my favorites of 2015. I will be talking about beauty favorites, um, hair products, only one actually, um, but also music movies and series favorites. So just a little disclaimer I will be talking about things I discovered and started loving in 2015 um, and not per se stuff I've always been loving like certain brands of makeup or certain artists because I've been loving them through the years and also the stuff that I will be discussing may not have been of 2015 or new but that just means that I've discovered it in 2015 and start loving it in 2015. Yes? Clear? Okay. So the first things I want to talk to you guys about is beauty products and the first of that list will be two MAC lipstick. I've always been a fan of MAC lipstick, uh, but I've got two shades that I think I will never go without the rest of my life ever again. Um, and those are Sin and Russian Red. The Russian Red lipstick is a very, very bright, neutral, vibrant red. Um, which I think just is a very classic look and is always good to have. And the second one, uh, Sin, is a more deep dark brownish red, which I, I am just in love with. I am in love with this color. Um, I think it is the perfect grungy, more darkish lipstick that I've ever seen and I want to wear it every day but that would be a shame. Most definitely my favorite lipsticks of 2015. Next up is an eyeshadow pencil that I got when I did um, an order on a Korean beauty website uh, and I got a bunch of stuff and I just actually threw this one in there to um, like get the free shipping <laughs> and I didn't know what to get anymore and this has been my favorite product of the, the haul I did then um, and it is a Eyeshadow Pencil by Peri Pera, if I pronounced that correctly. And this eyeshadow pencil just makes it like very easy to create a look that looks like you did a lot of effort. But <laughs> you just slapped on this pencil and that's it. Um, so because of that, I have been using it, well, I don't, don't want to say every day, but a lot of days throughout the year. If I needed to go to the office and I thought I need to look a little bit more put together but I didn't really have the energy or time in the morning I just put this in put this in put this on <laughs> and I would just be good to go and it looked awesome I actually got compliments so that was definitely one of my 2015 favorites I need to stop saying that at the end of every product or else you're gonna go nuts watching this video next up is my hula bronzer from benefits and this is my absolute find of 2015 because um, I never used bronzer because I was afraid to because I'm very pale as you can see I'm a ghost um, and I've used bronzers from like my mom or friends and stuff like that and they were always too dark or too orangey for my skin tone so I just never used bronzer um, but you know with this trend and all with all the contouring and bronzing everywhere I thought I want to try that again I need to find something that fits my skin tone and I found this one and it has been perfect ever since I love it um, it's a bit expensive but um, I've been using it well, every week at least and I think I have only touched a little bit of the product that is in there so it will take you a long way if you have a pale skin like mine and you're searching for a bronzer this is it this is the one oh in my opinion in my opinion this is the one so yeah, I've been loving that. And the last one of my beauty favorites is actually something I already bought in 2014. Um, but I just never used it. I kind of forgot I had it and then just ended up in a drawer somewhere. And that is my Sleek Blush in the shade Rose Gold. I used to have a MAC one that I used all the time until the beginning of 2050 because I ran out. Um, and I, I found this one again and have been using that blush always if I put on blush it was this blush because I'm just in love with it and it's I think it suits my skin tone perfectly I think it's just enough and not too much um, and it's fairly cheap I think I don't remember I think it was like 10 to 12 euros including shipping so that's perfect in my opinion. So those were my beauty products um, of 2015. I have one hair product I want to mention and that is the John Frieda Frizz E Shampoo. So ever since I dyed my hair a bright purple color, um, I've been using the Lush Solid Shampoo like the Avocado Co-Wash and that is a great shampoo. However, I just don't like washing my hair with a solid. I've come to realize that since I've been using it 
and it just doesn't work. I mean, it's a great shampoo. Um, if you have colored hair, it's good. If you don't have colored hair, it's still good. However, I'm just too clumsy to use a solid in the shower. It doesn't work. I need liquid shampoo. I'm sorry. And before I was using the solid from Lush, I've been using this. Uh, the John Free Doctor is E shampoo for months, I believe, and after I finish the solid, I think I will be going back to that just because uh, it made my hair feel so soft and it worked perfectly on my hair and it's a good shampoo. So those were my beauty and hair product favorites, so now we're off to movie series and music. So to start off, movies. Uh, again, this aren't all movies that came out in 2015, it's just movies I've discovered in 2015 and have been loving in 2015. The first movie I think is my favorite movie of 2015 and will be one of my favorites for years to come and that is Mad Max. Oh my god, Mad Max. <laughs> I was very glad that we decided to see this movie um, in the cinema, IMAX 3D big. It made the whole experience even better. I was I was there, I was in that fucking movie and oh wow. <laughs> and even though it has a very small story, if you think about it, it's not a very complex story. It has so much symbolism and themes underneath it and I just love how they made it and I... If you haven't seen Mad Max, of all the movies I'm gonna say, please watch. Mad Max because I really loved it. Another movie, or actually two movie movie series that I've been loving in 2015 are the Amazing Spider-Man uh, movies. I hadn't seen them, um, I don't know why I hadn't seen them, just never got the chance I guess. Um, and my boyfriend suggested them and I love them. I love the Amazing Spider-Man movies more than the older Spider-Man movies. I don't know why, I think it's just more the quirkiness of it all and it's a little bit more funny, humorous I think. Um, and the special effects are just awesome. It's a good movie, it's a good movie. Third movie is um, Inside Out. I know it's like a child's movie, but I think a lot of adults can agree with me in that. Now that is actually a pretty damn good movie. It uh, touches levels on so many things that I think everyone can relate to. It may it be in a somewhat childish, simplest form. However, um, it did make me think at the end of that movie uh, how we control our emotions and how important they are and what you need to do with them and how important it is to talk to people about stuff. So yeah, definitely one of my favorite movies. And the last one is also a movie that didn't come out in 2015. I don't know when it came out actually, but it is the Dallas Buyers Club. It's a whole different kind of movie than the movies I usually watch, I guess. Um, but it captivated me and the acting was so good, Jared Leto and and uh, Matthew McConaughey, in a way I've never seen Matthew McConaughey before, to be honest. Um, I just thought it was a really good movie and because it's also based on a true story, um, it makes it even better because you know this shit actually went down. Um, and it's, it's very captivating, also a very good movie to watch if you haven't seen it. I think it won Oscars or nominated for Oscars. Good movie, anyway. So those are my movies. I've been loving in 2015. How often have I said that sentence? However, uh, those were the movies. On to the series I've been loving in 2015. First one is an anime and that is Attack on Titan. Um, I think I've said this in a favorites video. I don't know which one, but I think I've said this in a favorite videos of the month thing. We have watched Attack on Titans the whole first season in one weekend, I think just all it was just a marathon and it was awesome and oh this is one of the most popular anime series out there or at least at the moment um, and I, I can just totally agree if you're new to anime and you like a little bit more fighting gory blood mythical creatures style this is an anime for you um, and I cannot wait to hopefully see the second season that still isn't here Second series I want to talk about is also an anime um, and I watched this because a friend of mine recommended it to me and it's the most gorgeous anime I've seen my entire life and that is Beyond the Boundary or Kyokai no Kanata. It only has one season and one movie after that um, and then it's done so that was perfect <laughs> and it's just uh, so beautifully made if you don't even like 
story behind it. I think you can appreciate it about uh, on just on the level how they made this, how they animated this. Gorgeous. Um, however, I also enjoyed the story very much. It's a little bit more girly and a little bit more romantic, but also with a lot of gore and fighting and I don't know troubled teens. So. 10 out of 10, perfect. Third series I will be talking about is actually something I rediscovered, um, which gave me a lot of nostalgia feels, uh, and that is that we started watching Dragon Ball Z again. Now, I've watched this when I was little, I think I was not even in high school yet, so I was probably around the year of 11 or something, um, and I loved it very much back then. Um, and somebody told my boyfriend that they have um, a shortened version of Dragon Ball Z because they have a lot of fillers. If you've never seen Dragon Ball Z, it's also an anime series, by the way. Um, but they tend to spread everything out uh, to the max. So um, if the world is gonna explode in two minutes, it's gonna take you 10 episodes. However, in this Dragon Ball Z Kai version, they remastered it and they uh, removed all the fillers. So it takes like the half of the amount of episodes it usually would to get to the ending. So we're still working on that. I think we started in the summer somewhere with this and we just watch a few episodes every now and then. And it's just, it's just cool to watch again. It makes me feel nostalgic and it's a cool series. And I've never seen the ending when I was younger. So I hope to see the ending now so I can have closure. And the fourth and last series I will be talking about is Pretty Little Liars. This series has captivated me by the way I think they intended to because I just wanted to know who the flip A was. I just, every, every episode ended on a cliffhanger and I thought, I need to know, I need to keep watching because I think it already came out like 2010 or 11 or something. And I just watched four seasons back to back every time. Laying in my bed, watching Netflix until 4 a.m. or something because I just needed to know. And we finally know something now, but then we're gonna time travel five years ahead and something's gonna happen and it's starting soon. So that's also a good thing. Um, but yeah, that is a series that just kept me busy in 2015. So that was it for series. Um, Last genre I will be talking about in this video is music. I'm gonna start again with a rediscovery of something that I used to listen to a lot in high school. Kind of forgot about its existence until they released an album in 2015 and that is Fall Out Boy. I used to love that in high school, haven't really listened to it in the last couple of years and then their new album dropped in 2015 and that has been on repeat when it came out. Wow. I used to... Um, work somewhere else or well I was stationed there um, and every day I took the bus and every day I listened to Fall Out Boy when I was driving the bus. Yeah I love their new album I think it's a great album and it also made me listen to their old songs again so again nostalgia feels with it all. Second album or second artist I've been listening to in 2015 is Melanie Martinez, Dr. Cry Baby album. I think she has an EP before that, but I haven't listened to that. And her style and her, the way she expresses herself and the whole way she writes her songs just, I don't know, it, like I said before, captivated me. I was very interested. It's very different, I don't know, kind of different than what I usually listen to, but I really, really, really like her style and her music and her songs. Um, yeah, third band I'm gonna be talking about is Churches. Um, I got to know Churches because my boyfriend put it on in a car, I believe, when we were on vacation to Italy. And it's just a great, mellow, I don't know, background music. I love to put it on when I'm working. It's just, I love the vibe. It's a little bit more electronic than what I usually listen to, but it's an awesome, band or at least the album the latest album I, I i really really enjoyed them fourth band i've been really enjoying in 2015 is uh 21 pilots i do believe they were popular way before i discovered this all and i'm so late to this party but um i listened to blurry face just because a lot of people were so ecstatic about 21 pilots on social media so i thought i need to find out what it is and i loved that album, I love that album, present, 
continuous. I love that album. I just think 21 Pilots has a very diverse style. All the songs are different. Um, you cannot really categorize them, I think. Um, it's just, I think there's something to love for everyone in that album. Maybe even their older albums haven't listened to that, I have to be honest. But their style just goes everywhere, which I love. So, Blurry Face, great album. And I'm gonna end this all off with my guilty pleasure of 2015. And that would be Girls' Generation, which is K-pop. Again, not really the music I would listen to normally, I think. However, I don't even understand them. I don't even know what they're talking about, but the rhythm and the cute girls dancing all choreographically and the show, the whole thing they put on when you watch the video, it's just, it's just awesome to watch. So yeah, um, was a bit doubtful on talking about this in the video, but then again, I have her album on my mobile phone, so I don't think it would be fair to say it's not a favorite of 2015. Um, if you like K-pop, uh, if you like K-pop, you know Girls' Generation probably, so if you want to get into K-pop, try Girls' Generation. So those were my favorites of 2015. I hope this video isn't too long. I think I've been talking for hours, or at least it feels that way. Um, so sorry about that if you made it to the end of this video Please give it a thumbs up because somehow you've enjoyed it apparently because you watched till the very end. Thank you Thank you Makes me happy. Also, if you want to be reminded when I make a new video on YouTube You can just subscribe to my channel. It will give you a notification if you're here I think you know the drill, but feel free to subscribe. I'm trying to make two videos a week Also, if you want you can follow me on Twitter Instagram and Snapchat Those are all at Esmeniome just like it's spelled here or else you can find the links in the down bar So that was it for 2015. We've wrapped that all up. It's done now And I hope to see you guys in my new video next week Bye!